Okay, here we are doing a pretty straightforward linear programming problem. And I'm going to do the final solution for this on GeoGebra, which I think makes things a lot easier. So stay tuned for that. Right now, right now though, we have to do our constraints. This is how a typical linear programming problem works. You have two variables. In this case, we've got a, an energy bar company that's trying to design the world's best energy bar with chocolate chips and peanuts in it and so our two variables are chocolate chips and peanuts and we have a series of constraints that limit the way we can manufacture in the end we want to minimize the cost of this making this bar to the manufacturer okay so first thing we do is assign variables and uh, I think it's important to sort of know what the units are are we talking about individual items or an amount in this case we're not counting out peanuts or chocolate chips we measure them here in the United States in ounces, all right? And so our first um, variable uh, will be X is the number of chocolate chips by ounces, ounces of chocolate chips. I'm going alphabetically here. That's kind of a nice convention to keep. Y then is the number of ounces of peanuts, all right? So as we write these constraints, we'll reflect those variables. The Food and Drug Administration says that energy bar needs at least two ounces of chocolate chips. I don't know why, but that's what they say. So that is going to be a simple X. has got to be greater than or equal to two. It's only dealing with our chocolate chips. Um, there's also a restriction on peanuts, and that is we must have at least three ounces of peanuts in each bar. Okay, so we write it like that. The total, that's combining our X's and our Y's, has to be less than 12 can't make it too big so we're gonna write X plus Y is less than or equal to 12 ounces um, our next is that the manufacturer wants the energy bar to have 160 grams of protein so now we're measuring protein in grams don't get freaked out by two different units of measurement this is just the way we refer to protein on our labels so we can write that if each ounce of chocolate chips has 10, we take every ounce X and multiply it by 10 to get the grams of protein for that. And each ounce of peanuts has 30, so we multiply 30 by Y. That gives us our total grams, which have to be less than 160. Okay, Similar kind of thing for um, the energy bar and the carbohydrates. Less than, um, sorry, have at least 240 grams. Oh, and at least 160. Okay, not less than, more than. So I misread that, but caught that mistake. The energy bar has to have at least 240, and they give you the breakdown there. 40 grams of carbohydrates in every chocolate chip, ounce of chocolate chips, and 20 for every ounce of peanuts. So that constraint is written like this. 40 for X and 20 times Y is got to be greater than or equal to 240. So write and graph the inequalities to show these constraints. Okay, we're going to do that now. We're going to go over to GeoGebra. So there's just a blank page. This I've downloaded this as a Chrome app. I think it's an awesome way to do it. It seems to work very, very well. No glitches. You can share files. You have to sign up for it when you first get into GeoGebra as a Chrome app. I'm going to be doing some algebra as I graph, so you can't do that on the geometry mode. So I'm going to click Algebra and up it comes and you'll see here's my standard graph um, you'll see there are all sorts of wonderful tools up here to help you with this it's easy to get used to you can look at YouTube tutorials to help out The first thing I'm going to do is be aware that I can move this graphics because I'm going to be mostly in the first quadrant here so I'm going to shift that over like that then I can start typing in my constraints okay so for instance I know that I'm going to um, actually graph the boundaries and shade later. So I'm going to say x equals 2 and hit enter. And that's the boundary that I'm going to be more than. So I'm going to shade on this side over here of my line. And then remember the other constraint was y has got to be more than 3. So I graph y equals 3 because I'm only really interested in the boundaries now, but I'm conscious of the fact that I'll be shading above that. So I just kind of make a little note then I know that x plus y is going to be less than 12 so again sounding like a broken record but I graph that boundary alright so now I want to see a little bit higher so this is how I do it I move to this and I choose 
my graphics move component and I simply just grab it and I drag it down okay if I like things to be more or less equally scaled I can drag this too so it looks a little bit more like it should alright so what was my next constraint it was uh, maybe let me go back and refresh my memory here it was um, 10x plus 30y is going to be equal to 160 so I type in 10x plus 30y equals 160 okay and there we go that is that constraint I'm shading above that okay so you're starting in this is my fenced in region right here all right and then my next one is 40x plus 20y is equal to 240 okay oops uh, nope that's good you'll see how it simplifies it takes out zeros and uh, we'll we'll do other simplifications so don't let that freak you out I now have all of the constraints graphed I have this feasible region I'm shading above these lines and below this one so if I go up here to polygon choose the polygon tool I can pick any vertex this one's an easy one click on that come down here click on this one I'm fencing in what's called the feasible region this is the only place I'm going to find solutions to my problem of manufacturing my uh, granola bars. All right, so here we go. Over here, this is where the fun is. Um, it's found all these vertices for me. Now you could write systems of linear equations and do the algebra, old school. That would be fine, but this is pretty instantaneous, so it makes it easy and you can be confident you're doing it correctly. Well, the rule with linear programming is that the vertices are the only places where I'm going to get the best or the least of something. In this case, I'm trying to minimize the cost. So to have my cost be at a minimum, it's highly likely that it's point E, point D, or point C that will go into my objective function. What the heck is an objective function, you might say? Here it is. It's based on the fact that the manufacturer tells us that peanuts cost 25 cents per ounce and chocolate chips cost 5 cents per ounce. Okay, So an equation that represents this objective is as follows. Let's see if I've got it here. All right. Now notice I didn't fall for this little trick here that I put peanuts before chocolate chips. So you have to read carefully. Chocolate chips are my x's. There it is, 0.05 for x plus 0.25 for y is going to be, oh, it's not 240. That's just going to be the cost, okay? So that's how I determine the cost. I multiply every x I have times 0 0.05 and every y times 0.25 to see what the cost is. So I'll remember that. I'll go back to this and I can uh, let's see I can go down to my input barely visible down there and if I type in for instance my coordinate at point E that's 28 I could type in 0 0.05 and then times in this case it's uh, for point E what I say it was it was 2 and then do plus 0.25 and my, multiply that by uh, 8 and this when I hit enter up oh, the number is way hidden down there but it's 2.1 okay that's the cost of manufacturing at vertex E again I'm just putting in the points in this case 4 4 into my objective function so again 0.05 times 4 plus 0.25 times 4 will give us another point so that's 1.2 so um, D is much uh, less um, cost than the 2.1 at F my other option here is point C and that's 73 so I will type in for a final time 0.05 times um, 7 plus 0.25 times 3 and this will give me point C drum roll please and it is 1.1 therefore this point right here highlighted at 7.3 that is the least expensive way I can make granola bars that fit all those constraints thanks a lot good luck bye bye